Hey, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 33. And today we're returning with the final two games of the Premier League season as we play West Brom away and Leicester at home in the season finale. Before we get to the games though, shout out Norwich for getting on off camera. And I wish I had better news to share with you in the run off camera. But after the two games you saw in the last episode, the 6-0 drubbing where it's Stamford Bridge and the 1-1 draw to Brighton, there were just the two games off camera, but they were back-to-back -back defeats as the poor run of form, the worst run of form since season one continued with terrible, terrible losses here. First away in London at Craven Cottage against Fulham, uh, where we lost by three goals to one. Vukasin Vasilic, who's been one of the bright spots this season, gave us the lead with 17 minutes to go. But it's the same old problems. <laughs> We just can't defend balls into the box, and particularly from set pieces. In 11 minutes, Fulham scored three goals at the end, two from corners, and then one in stoppage time. A lovely goal from Callum Slattery, as they got the win by three goals to one. And I swear, man, sometimes it's not even about tactics. It's just poor individual marking from uh, from balls into the area that we've seen so often this season. And our final game off camera uh, was a 5-2 loss at home to Arsenal. Uh, I fielded a weakened team for the game. I decided to make a tactical ultimate alteration for it and we ate, we fell behind through Lacazette we were actually playing okay we were down by a goal at the break despite having a weak inside there but we were doing all right and then Bele found us a leveler five minutes later and it was 16 minutes to go Vasilic did it again two goals in two for the Serbian wonder kid and uh, sorry sorry three goals in three games for the Serbian wonder kid as he made it 2-1 but we just totally capitulated once again with 11 minutes to go Guendouzi made it 2-2 then there were two disallowed goals one for Arsenal and then one for us it was still 2-2 and then with just two minutes remaining in normal time still tied at 2-2 uh, Lucas Torreira makes it 3-2 and then two goals in stoppage time one from Grimaldo and one from Lacazette as we totally capitulated if there was ever a game that sort of summed up the season it was definitely that one it's not the fact we lost a game it's the manner of how we lost a game and it sort of summed up the season really it's not how we've played this season it's the manner of how we performed towards the end of the campaign because as you can see right here in the Premier League table two games games to go. As I mentioned in the last episode, we're not going to finish in the European place now. Uh, we're not even going to finish in the Europa League place now. We're four points behind Liverpool and five behind Man City. We do have a game in hand, but let's be honest here, about a goal difference record too. We're not going to catch up. But again, it's just, it's so frustrating because at the start of the season, we were predicted to finish here in seventh place, right? As you would say, we've done what the media predicted. We've done what the board asked of us, which was to finish in the top half. So that's good. We're, uh, we're in line with our expectations. But again, it's the manner of how it's happened this season. Look at this. I mean, for, for such a long time we were in the top four and for a brief period of time we were in third but look at the downward spiral towards the end of the campaign absolutely atrocious and it's why I've been tearing my hair out and wondering whether it's time to blow this team up I discussed it in the last episode but with the absolutely atrocious defending this season I I must say I think today you're going to be seeing the final appearances of quite a few players in this Norwich City team so let's dive into it then the final two games of the season first the penultimate one our final away day and then the final game of the campaign in match day 38. Heading into the game, as you can see on the injury report right now, Thompson is out and he is down for the rest of the season after suffering a twisted ankle. And as we know, Cantwell is done for the campaign as well. Everyone else is okay. And this is the team. We're going to have our 4 one 2 3 Gigan press uh, for this game. In the last game against Arsenal, I played a Tiki Taka 4 one 2 3 But for this one, we're going to go Gigan press away at the Hawthorns. And this will be our team. Freen is in goal. But for Lewis, Benkovic, Godfrey and Aaron's with Sander, Reed and Buendia playing through the middle of the park today. We'll be Zay on the left, Dembele on the right. And that man in form right now, Vukasin Vasilic, leading the line. On the bench, Henderson, Akawawa. Uh, that's not how you say his name, Akawa, Byram Longstaff, Rose, Brewster and Ida as well. So two of the academy graduates getting minutes here towards the end of the season. First game, it's West Brom away. Let's see if we can end this horrific run of form. Come on, you Canaries. Look, we're not going to qualify for Europe. We've totally blown that. But let's at least have a decent finish, yeah? Have a strong finish to the campaign. Let's step up our game here and put an end to the recent run of bad results. Come on, Norwich. And speaking of the players that will be leaving in uh, in the summer, or the ones I'm predicting that will be leaving, I would probably say the players that might be playing for their final get final times here for Norwich are Filip Benkovic, who has interest from big European clubs, Sander Berger, who, is in who has interest from both Real Madrid and Barcelona, and and Emi Buendia as well. Only two goals this season. I wouldn't be surprised if Buendia's long tenure is coming to an end. I'd be shocked if all three of these players are still here come the start of next season. As a jetty heads in the opening goal of the game and West Brom are in front. 
Crosses into the box, we just simply can't defend them. And our woeful season defensively continues. This is going to be one win in 13 games. Unbelievable. West Brom right now are right down the bottom of the table and fighting for their lives. Don't get me wrong, they're motivated for the game, but... We, we shouldn't be struggling as much as we are. I, I don't know what's happened to us, man. I really don't. Big change is needed. Absolutely, no doubt about it. And it seems like every single FM series I do, there's a period around four or five seasons in where this sort of stuff happens. We've got a great team, loads of good youngsters, some really great players as Vasilic makes it four in four and puts us back on level terms. But we just go into this really poor run of form and I'm forced to make a big decision. If you remember in our Cardiff save last year, that big decision was to, uh, to take the armband off Harry Maguire and give it to Jason. This season, I think it might be gutting this team and looking to re rebuild. Anyway, if we are going to rebuild, this man's certainly going to be a Vasilic this year. It's been incredible. If I could go back in time, I'll tell you the one thing I would definitely do, and that is start Vasilic in more games this season, because he's had so many of his appearances coming off the bench and having to perform in like the final 20, 15 minutes. But whenever he's been on the pitch, he's played well. His development has been stunted by my 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 lack of man management, I suppose. I haven't played him enough, and right on cue, he's made it 2-1. I tell you, next season, Rian Big Game Brewster, Adam Ida, watch out, lads, because I think this guy is going to be the starting striker in this team. When Diaz free kick whipped in, Godfrey heads it across the face of the goal, and Vasilic simply couldn't miss. 2-1. 15 minutes to go. Can we end the season off strong? We're not going to qualify for Europe, but I'll take two wins from two just to give us some good confidence to end the season off. Highlight here as Lewis finds Vasilic, who's been a man in form lately. Five goals in his last... No, sorry. Is it five and three or five and four? As Rose chips it to Dembele and Karamoko denied. Still 2-1. Much better showing in the second half. Long staff to Ahrens. And now Max is dispossessed. And oh, no, 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 no. Oh, God, Farina. <laughs> Took your time there, didn't you? As he finds Lewis. And with 20 seconds to go, that should do it. And is this the hat trick? It is indeed. Vukasin Vasilic. Oh, no, it's going to be ruled out for offside. The line is not moving. And it's going to be called back. What a shame. He deserved it. He's, he's been the only saving grace in this poor run of form. But sadly, he's prevented his first match ball in the Premier League, courtesy of the VAR, as he finds long stuff. Is there still a chance for a third goal? No, that will do it. Final score, West Brom 1, Norwich 2. So typically, when it doesn't matter at all, we return to winning ways. How typical is that? Two on the final score, though. Good to see the poor run of form ended. But I'll say to the boys here, come to final whistle, but calmly, keep it calm. You played very well today. Why can't you perform like that in every match? And particularly in, in the later stages of the season, Vasilic is confused and demotivated. So I'll calmly say, uh, I'm proud to win and go on the way you play. He's just confused now. But either way, it's, it's typical. Play without pressure and we get the win there. One game to go. We're not going to make the Europa League. But either way, good to close out the season with a with a win, finally. Now, let's have a quick look at the league table as well. It is basically over. Liverpool are one point and one place above us and have a game in hand as well. That comes today uh, against Tottenham Hotspur, who have guaranteed fourth place. So I'd imagine the Reds should win that game there with Spurs having nothing to play for in their final two games of the season. And Liverpool need to lose both of their games. And instead, because of the win there by a goal to nil, that will do it. There will be no European football at Cairo next season. Season. But you know what? Again, that might prove to be a blessing in disguise. I think our team has just been burnt out this season. A World Cup midway through the campaign. That's unprecedented. And of course, with a thin squad and having to play in Europe too. So many games in midweek. I, I think a season without European football will do us some good. And also you might have noticed in the relegation race right now, West Brom is still above the drop zone, but just by a point. Leicester City, by the way, have already been relegated. And I must say, there are a lot of players in this team I would love to bring to Car Road, including perhaps a return to Norwich City for James Madison. He doesn't have a relegation release clause, unfortunately, but I'm sure he wouldn't want to play championship football. No doubt about that. Harvey Barnes is there. They've got Hamza Chowder, who does quite well in FM2. Wilfred and Dini, who you guys know, I'm a massive fan of is still there as well. There, there are quite a few players aren't really going to poach from Leicester for next season. Now they're down to the second tier. And speaking of the Foxes, they are our final opponents of the season as I've just got my Continental B licence. Uh, I began a coaching course during the World Cup uh, just to take advantage of the fact there was no competitive games and I'm now two steps away from completing all the coaching courses and getting my Continental Pro. And uh, yeah, this will be our team for the game. Then final game of the season at home to Leicester. Already relegated with nothing to play for and as we know, we can't finish any higher. Well, actually, we could finish in sixth. Who have City got today on the final day? They're away against Watford. I think they'll probably win that. We could 
Do you know we could do it? We could possibly do it. We need a miracle. We need Watford to win, and we've got a win as well. Highly unlikely, but you never know. So yeah, final game of the season and at home to the Foxes. Let's see if we can finish the campaign off strong with back-to-back -back wins for the first time in absolutely ages. So stick with the same instructions in our Giga Press style of play, but a few changes to our lineup here. And again, you might be seeing some final appearances in Norwich shirts today. Freenas in goal. Marcelo is playing his final game for the club. Benkovic might well be too, alongside Godfrey and Byron, who also is out of contract at the end of the season. Uh, Vidal's leaving at the end of the season. Berger might be leaving for next season. And Will Rose, that's our midfield trio today. Ize's on the left. Buendia, is this the final game for Buendia? He's on the right today. And Vasilic, the man in form of late, is up top. And on the bench, Henderson, Bushiri. I think he'll be gone over the summer. Aaron's long staff, Brewster, Ida, and Ajorke as well. Final game of the season, Leicester at home. Can we pull off the impossible and make Europe? Come on, you Canaries. I tell you what, if we make the Europa League, it would be the worst way to do it ever. I mean, honestly, we have had an absolute tank towards the end of the season, and yet winning back-to-back -back and Man City somehow losing away against Watford, that would be ludicrous. But the first chance is going to come to us, and we scored very early as well. One of those players out of constant in the summer, Sam Byron getting the assist. I think I probably will give him at least another year, and he crosses to the centre, and Abrecht Gize gets his ninth for the season. Three minutes in, perfect start for Norwich. Why haven't we been playing like this in the recent months? 1-0, Norwich in front corner for the Canaries. Buendia whips it in and oh well Benkovic scores against his former team. I don't know whether he's showing respect out there or not but I must say it's such a big dilemma for me over the summer. What star players are we selling and with Benkovic having interest from some really big clubs including Manchester City, Manchester United and Real Madrid as well. He's headed us into a two goal lead and as things stand, well, we're keeping the pressure on Man City, but will that be enough right now? Oh, I tell you what, we've gone into sixth there, as uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether... Oh, look at that top left, Warford! Oh my god, no! Surely we're not going to pull this off. Gabby Barboza down the right is taken down by Marcelo. And Brazil slides in on Brazil as he gives away a penalty. Gabby Gol has a chance to make it 2-1 and give the Foxes a route back into the game from the spot. And he does. Smacks it past Farinez. 2-1. Deficit half. But as things stand, we're going into the Europa League. Again, due to the EC2 thingy, I keep forgetting the name of what it's called. The Europa Community Cup or whatever. Um, I don't know what this means for league standings. Now, due to Everton reaching the FA Cup final, traditionally, the FA Cup finalists, if they fell outside of a European place, would get given a Europa League spot. But I don't know now... What it, what it dictates, I'm not entirely sure. One thing I do know is that Sick will definitely guarantee a European place. So it's still leading by a goal, but here come the Foxes as Barboza slides it through to Barnes, and Harvey Barnes drills it, and I tell you what, I'll be fuming if Man City lose and we fail to capitalise on the final day. Leading by two, and we surrender it. Yep, Watford is still beating Man City for... F oh, come on! Seriously? And nowhere we've got a chance to finish in Europe, and we're totally blowing it. I'm going to say to the boys calmly, you know, keep it calm, final team talk of the season, and saying we're not doing badly at all. If everyone continues to work hard, we'll win this. I will individually criticise the defence, the attack in the midfield as well. What a shame that Vasilic, in his fantastic run to the season today, has really let the side down. And I might take off the kid, Will Rose, in a bit as well for Matty Longstar. Possibly go two up top, maybe give us a Vasilic some support. I'm not entirely sure, but 45 minutes to go. I do expect City to find a leveller at some point, but honestly, if they lose and we fail to win, I'll be absolutely fuming that'll be three match day 38 in four season <sighs> well we've absolutely bottled it bunch of fucking bottlers this team bunch of bottlers and what a surprise the third goal for Leicester comes from a set piece Barboza drills in Chowdhury finishes from close range we now need to score two more goals I can't believe this three seasons out of four we've choked away something on the final game Vasilic hits the crossbar Watford are going to win let's bring on Ida top scorer this season I'll play him as a deep line forward alongside Vasilic we'll much higher our tempo we'll play standard no more direct run at defence and uh, distribute the pace of the ball quickly when getting it back Press as much as we can. Yeah, half an hour to go. I, I, I can't believe this shit. Buendia is anxious. I'll tell you what, he's getting fucking sold as well. I bought an Ida. I'm going to bring on Brewster and play him up top alongside Adam. I'll drop Vasilic to the left-hand side as an inverted winger for the final few minutes. But I don't think it's going to matter. I can't believe this shit. 
Watford are going to lose. Uh, sorry, Watford are going to win on the final day against Man City, and we're going to lose at home to already relegated Leicester City. Absolutely embarrassed. I can't even find Watford on the bloody latest scores at the moment as Marcelo down the left hand side crosses and it will drop to Ida who does make it 3 3. There's a minute and a half to go, but we need another. For some reason Watford's score isn't showing up there. I don't know why. But anyway, long staff to Marcelo. Cross to the centre. How good has Marcelo been in his debut year for us? And Adam does make it 3 3. Is there one late chance for us to get the win and send us into Europe? Come on, Norwich. Please, please, please. Nope, we've absolutely fucking bottled it. I can't believe it. I actually can't believe it. Free... Oh, for fuck's sake. Unlucky, boys. It just wasn't our day. It's not been our season, either. Three seasons in four years. We have... Oh, well, do you know what? Man City scored a late equalising goal. So, in the end... Uh, it, uh, it wouldn't have mattered regardless because uh, we, we, even if we would have won the game, Man City's goal difference is so good, we still would have finished in second. So do you know what? It wouldn't have mattered anyway. I, I was going to get fucking really angry for a second there. But for the third season in four, we would have bottled something away on the final day. Either way, still a shocking end to the campaign. At home to relegated Leicester already. And we concede three goals and we were leading by two. It wouldn't have mattered regardless how we won or not. But either way... So, so bloody annoyed, man. And again, it's, it's not where we finished this season. If you would have said to me at the start of the season, we'll finish in seventh, I would have taken it. I would have taken it. The board said top half. It could have possibly given us Europa League football. In the end, it doesn't. But I still would have taken it regardless. But again, it's not where we finished. It's the manner of how we perform this season. Just a, a terrible, terrible throwaway, this campaign, to end up in seventh place. I, I don't know why it says there we finished in fifth when we clearly didn't. But either way, just so frustrating. We're a really, really good team, but there's a there's a serious problem here, and I'm not entirely sure what that problem is. I don't know what it is that we're we're currently struggling with the most. It probably is the tactics. So I think it's up to me to make the big changes. But again, this team is really good. It's just had a terrible end to the season once again. So as you look at the end of the season awards here, Sander Berger was our fans player of the season. I personally would have given it to Vasilic. He's been the brightest spot this season. Uh, Todd Cattle won the goal of the season. We'll watch that together. Picks the ball up inside his own half. Drives forward. Keeps on going. Keeps on going and then just smacks it in. Nice goal, but I think we scored better than that this season. But fair enough, that's the goal of the season. And uh, as for the sign of the season, that was Matty Longstaff. Again, I would have given it to Vasilic, who I think should also have been given the young player of the season as well. I think this year, Vukasin was really harshly treated by me. He deserved to start way more games than I gave him. Look at that, he played 30 games in the Premier League, but only six of those were starts. And that's why his progress has, has dropped so much this season, because he just hasn't been given the game time. I'm sorry, Vukasin. I'm sorry I didn't believe in you. I should have done so. You're a wonder kid. You've got a driven personality. You know I love that. Next season, I promise, mate, you'll get more game time. Norwich have been expected to claim a top half finish, and they did just that. Well, that's very brief. <laughs> Norwich struggled to find their best form at times. That's definitely true. But were otherwise able to enjoy a campaign which saw them produce a highly respectable finish. Yeah, I guess so. And match the season was the 4-3 victory over Spurs. I probably would have said it was the 3-2 victory over Man City, to be honest, the comeback win at the Etihad. And our moment to forget was the 6-0 loss away at Chelsea. I mm, suppose so. I think we had bigger lows than that, but fair enough. And uh, sadly, we didn't 100% full out our stadium this season. Last season, we had 100% sold out every game. This year, dropped a little bit. That's quite disappointing as well, considering this year we we're in Europe for the first time. The thing that I'm most happy about, though, with this new Norwich board is that their vision for the future is very realistic. As you can see in the five-year plan, we just need to stay in the top half and maintain a Premier League top half finish, which really is definitely doable. We also need to develop the best youth system in the country, which again, with my luck with uh, academy graduates, is going to be very hard to do. But on the pitch, maintaining a Premier League top half finish for the next five years, that's that's more than doable. So yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy with that. The season is over and it's time for you all to go and have a well-deserved break. I want every single one of you to be fully rested with a positive frame of mind when you get back because we're going to finish in a top half position next year. Yep, the, the, the players aren't overly ambitious, neither are the board, so I guess I shouldn't be either. Top half, that's all we need to do next year. Of course, I wanted European football, but sadly wasn't to be. As for our budgets, all oh, for next season, I must say, well, we've got a lot of money to work with for the upcoming campaign. £69 million in our transfer budget, and the wage budget is set at 1.3 mil, which I believe right now we're actually close to hitting anyway. Yeah, we are at one point, just under 1.2. So, yeah, that's a, that's a very generous budget from the board, though. Again, the finances are pretty healthy, 77 million. I'm not sure I'll spend all of that, but it's a, it's a good budget to have at least.
And in the Europa League final, Bayern Munich taking on Manchester City. I, I think if Man City win that, then of course they qualify for the Champions League. And I wonder whether that will give us European football next year if they win this. So fingers crossed Man City can get the job done tonight. And oh, well, no, it's made redundant because Bayern Munich won by two goals to one anyway. So uh, I think because of that, that definitely means we won't be qualifying for Europe for next season. Yeah, Man City will go into the EC2, the Europa Conference League, and that means for sure seventh place won't do it. Because Everton finished in the FA Cup final, and that's coming on the weekend, we'll play that game and end it there. We will not have European football next year. But again, that might prove to be a blessing in disguise. And you know, one thing I have been doing as well towards the end of the campaign is looking at the job center and seeing the managerial positions that are available right now. Liverpool have sacked Klopp after a really poor year. I doubt they would take me on. But I am thinking I've got some other leagues uh, loaded across Europe. Possibly a, a trip abroad and perhaps this could be the first ever FM save where I move teams. I'm, I'm not against doing it. I don't think I'll be applying for any jobs, but if one does come in, I'll certainly consider it. So in the FA Cup final, Everton take on Manchester United. will play this here and end the season there. Manchester United win it by three goals to one at Wembley. And that's what... Oh! <laughs> I just skipped past it. Wow. Interesting. Norwich qualify for the Europa conference league after securing a top seven finish so in the end despite Everton reaching the FA Cup final they miss out on European football because they didn't win it so I guess there have been some rule changes then in the Premier League due to the uh, due to the European Europa I keep forgetting the name of it and I just saw it Europa Conference League I think it's called but um interesting very very interesting indeed we've qualified for the Europa Conference League playoff. I, I, I guess in that case, Everton had to win it in order to qualify for Europe. Instead, thank you Manchester United, you've given us European football next year. And uh, sadly, it's not going to be the Europa League, that's what we really wanted. But we've got something. We've got the Europa Conference League. And we'll be going into it next season. Well, how about that? What an interesting finish to today's episode. Didn't see that coming. But there you go. Thank you, Manchester United. So, that was this episode of the Football Manager series, guys. A big thank you for watching it if you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. It's been a very interesting season for, to say the very least. We had our worst run of form in this series, but we still managed to scrape European football of some sort for the following season. But I tell you this, season five is going to be very interesting indeed. Whatever you do, do not miss the season opener, which will be coming out either tomorrow or Monday. I think there are a lot of the big names here that will be leaving. Philippe Benkovic probably going, Sander Berger probably going, Emi Buendia possibly going, not entirely sure, Bushiri probably going, Byram out of contract, Cantwell might be going. I tell you, this Norwich team could have a massive change over the summer, so whatever you do, do not miss the season opener, which will be coming out very soon. But thank you for watching this season, though, guys. Hope you have enjoyed it, despite a crazy ending. And if you have, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic week. Weekend. And again, I'll see you for the season opener as season five will resume in the very next episode where this Norwich team could look completely different as we go into, into the Europa Conference League. Have a great day, guys. Much love. And I'll see you for the next episode, the new season, very soon.